that's when we in my group. So when I was a teenager, I would have spent a lot more time in the flats. I would have spent a lot more time in any so. I would have considered Greek Street like my home as a kid, you know what I mean? My childhood home, but Church Street is where I'm from, and um, even still to this day, my family lives here. So this is um, where I was born and bred. It's an area full of great people, do you know what I mean? A great community and great community spirit. And but you know what I mean, there's there's a lot of negative too. You just have to stay away from that shit, to be honest. You know what I mean? It's, it's easy to fall into that trap and into that down that slippy slope, you know. Because there's opportunities everywhere to just jump at, you know what I mean? But there's also opportunities in a positive way to jump at too. So, and if there's no opportunities, go and make them, do you know what I mean? That's, that's kind of what I do, and thankfully, do you know what I mean? I just found something I love, the martial arts, and I just fucking hit the gym every day, and I fell in love with it. And, and I've had friends go this way, and I've had friends go that way, do you know what I mean? And I went this way, go and do something with your life, you know what I mean? Because we can all do it, you know what I mean? It's, we can all do it. You know, and that's, I, I am motivated to be, even to be the example if that's the case. I never wanted to be a role model and I'm not a role model. But I'm just, I am kind of an example in the way that if you say like it can't be done, well, watch, watch me do it then. You know, because I've been told a hundred times, a thousand times in my life, you can't do this, you can't do this, you know what I mean? But I can. <laughs> watch me. From North Inner City, Dublin, Ireland, please welcome Kiefer B. The only reason I'm here is my stubbornness, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm too stubborn, I don't listen to nobody but myself really, you know, in terms of what I'm going to do in my life. You're either going to be on board or you're going to be in my way and or you're just going to get cut out of my life. I'm the only one really from the Northern I see that kind of came from the bottom up to where I am now, making money from fighting and doing my thing. But thank God I listened to myself and thank God I was stubborn because if I wasn't, you know, who the fuck knows what I'd be doing. You already uh, told us how you're feeling. You're feeling hungry. W what is the hunger? You just want, you're trying to get back in the wind calm, trying to compete again. I was talking about pizza. I'm fucking starving. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I am trying to get back in the, in the wind column. The last fight wasn't a loss. It was a no contest, in my opinion. I didn't lose that fight. The warm up drill. The warm up. And then you will do round, okay? Five minute warm up. This is my gym, my main gym, SPG Ireland. I've been here um, doing my SPG about over a decade anyways. Um, yeah, I love this gym. It's made me the fighter I am today, do you know what I mean, under John Kavanagh and all the boys, all my teammates. You know, one of the hardest parts about MMA is when it hits the ground, how to handle it, you know what I mean, how to fight on the ground. And uh, I came to the gym a striker and now I'm almost like a fucking grappler at this stage because I've just done so much grappling over the years, you know what I mean. And I really have a true love for grappling as well. I love wrestling, I love grappling. so. It's, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful martial art, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, and uh, John's the first black belt in Jiu-Jitsu in Ireland. He's the one that kind of brought grappling to Ireland um, a long time ago, so um, he, he would have one of the best minds in mixed martial arts, you know what I mean? He's, he has an engineering degree, so he has an engineer's mind turned into martial arts coach. Yeah, well, they say with engineering, um, as you graduate, whatever you were learning, it's probably already obsolete because it changes so quickly, the world. But what it does teach you to do is it trains you how to learn. And I think that was a help for me in the early days that there was no one I could go to. There was no MMA gyms. There was no one doing jiu-jitsu over here. So I had to kind of be able to reverse engineer fights, watch fights, see what was working in them. Grab my little brother and bend his arm till he screamed. And then I knew that was a technique. <laughs> Keepers uh, trained for and prepared for some big fights in the past. 10,000 people in the tree arena. So this one is just another walk in the park for him. So we just want to keep him uh, injury free, keep up the intensity a little bit, but other than that, he's, uh, he's more than ready. He kind of calms me down and gets me back into that technical mindset. Sometimes I get a little bit too high in the fights. <laughs> Crosby closing the gap now, Black felt his heavy shot, listen to the crowd. Oh my goodness, Chris. While it lasted, it was unbelievable. I love martial arts and I love improving and I love winning and I'm like a heavy competitor and uh, I'm a real fighter and I just love fighting. I love winning, I love getting my hand raised. And it's not just about who the fucking toughest man is, not at all. You know, this is not a tough man's sport, but this is a thinking man's game. So you have to be smart and 
I mean, the best fighters in the world are intelligent people. Nobody got anywhere overnight and nobody got anywhere out of just sheer luck. Um, there is no luck in this sport. You just put the work in, you put the hours in, and then when you step in and you fight, the hard work will, will shine and the hard work will show, do you know what I mean? And uh, fighting is the most honest um, sport in the world. I mean, you can lie to everybody. You can lie to the world. You can lie on Instagram. You can lie to fucking everybody. But if you step into that cage and you haven't put the work in and you're under them lights, you're going to be exposed very quick. He weighed 163.8 pounds on a Dublin, Ireland. Big Daddy, Keeper, Crosby, Portugal, meets Ireland inside the Bellator cage. Parada and Crosby contracted at 165. It's all about hard work. It's all about honest hard work and just putting the hours in being well educated as a fighter, knowing every situation, having an answer for every situation, and then having the conditioning to be able to back that situation up. Hey Joe, are we supposed to do this full length with that? Ah. Are we supposed to walk back? Yeah, yeah thank God. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to getting into the fucking the UFC, to be honest, and just putting that all on the spot, you know what I mean? But again, you know what I mean, I'm coming off a loss now on, on my last fight, so when you lose a fight, you find out who you actually are, you know what I mean? Winning is easy, winning is the easiest thing you can do. For me, it's like win, lose, draw, who cares? I still love this sport, my heart, you know what I mean? I love training hard, I love getting in there, I love competing, I love pulling off techniques that I've been practicing. They will there and earn, earn these wins and uh, get me hand rest and do it fucking impressively. You know? I don't need nobody to tell me how good I am. I know how good I am, so just have to go out there and fucking fight, fight hard, fight smart, and uh, yeah, get the job done, move on, and, and just keep that vision, you know what I mean? Keep that vision in my head, and uh, yeah. If I have a handy, really, do you know what I mean? Me going to the gym is, it's not that hard. Like, I work my bollocks off, don't get me wrong, I put everything into this, it's hard, I, the hardest work you'll ever meet, but at the same time, you know, in comparison to someone like my, my nanny, you know what I mean? I mean, my ground up, it was, they had a heart. You know? Them two women are fighters in their own right as well, and there's a different way. I mean, Annie was a hard working woman. Do you know what I mean? She raised four kids on her own in the flats, in Greek Street flats. You know, worked multiple jobs at the same time just to put food on the table. So I'm just grateful I get to live this life. I'm making enough money to feed me family and pay the bills, and life is good. A year ago, I was on 144 euro a week on the social welfare. Literally, a year ago. And then I saw my fella told me life changed. Here I am now making serious bread feeding my family, looking after everybody the way I fucking wanted to do this my whole life. So again, from coming from that to this in what, a year and a half, it fills me up right and it's everything to me, yeah, and counting me. You have to kill me in there to get me over there. So I'm very proud of myself for coming from where I come from to, to where I am today. <laughs> I was fucking watching Cocoa Melon this morning. Do you know what I mean? And, you watch, and then you come to the gym and you're on a fucking mat full of killers and then it's you have to jump in and, and switch on, warm up, get into a zone and spar and fight or whatever. And I'll probably go home after this and watch Peppa Pig, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's uh, You have to have that switch. It's healthy to have that though, do you know what I mean, as well, because if you fucking just stay in the zone all the time, you'll burn out. It's like fucking having a Ferrari and keeping it above 160. You can't keep it above 160 the whole time, you know. You have to just cruise around and drive it like a normal car every now and then. And then every so often put the boot down, you know what I mean? It's like that in fighting as well. You can't fucking walk around the fire all the time. I'm switched on all the time, ready to fight, but you have to kind of have a bit of normality as well. But when you can hit that switch, get warm, get loose, and be ready and be in the zone to fight, then it's a very impressive thing to be able to do. And I believe any any great athlete can do that, any great fighter can do it, any you know, you look at Michael Jordan, you look at fucking Ronaldo, you look at you know Connor, you look at you know any any great Muhammad Ali. I'm uh, under six weeks out now for my next fight, so I'm headlining an, an event in Malde. I'm gonna be the main event over there on this show called Centorium. It's an outdoor arena, like a coliseum. 
type arena, do you know what I mean? So it's um it's gonna be something else, yeah. It's gonna be bleeding. It's gonna be bleeding mad, yeah, but I'm literally just focused on the gym, focused on getting sharp, 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 and then whoever shows up in six weeks is gonna get it, you know what I mean? They're gonna get fucking drilled. So I'm just looking forward to just going out there and proving myself, really proving, proving to myself I know I'm one of the best. And uh, it's a great opportunity, you know what I mean? It's a great, great opportunity. Main event, highlight real finish. Another clean win on the belt. And just make sure there's no questions asked. I want to finish them. I want to be, be vicious in this fight, you know what I mean? Show everybody. It's going to be an eyebrow razor, you know what I mean? I'm really excited, eh? I can't fucking buzz in there. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I train every day, do you know what I mean? Year round. If I'm not training, I'm, I'm probably injured, do you know what I mean? And even if I'm injured, I'm still doing something, do you know what I mean? I'm doing some sort of training, but uh, the only thing really that changes now, five, six weeks out from four, is the intensity of training and the calories dropping. That's really it, you know what I mean? So I'll, I'll limit the calories on the daily with my nutritionist, Tristan Kennedy, and um, and then the intensity ramps up a bit. I'll do the cardio, I'll get a bit harder. I'll, I'll start hitting the red zone two, three times a week. I'll spar a lot more. Then so I'll do a bit more real live rounds, you know what I mean, of like a fight simulation sparring and then I'm always trying to advance as a, as a fighter, do you know what I mean? So I'm not trying to come for I don't believe in it. I don't think training camp fighters never make it to the top, ever, you know what I mean? You have to be a lifer in this sport because if you're not and you fight someone who is, you're going to find out real quick, you know what I mean? Um, and it's devastating to see that, you know what I mean? So 12 weeks isn't enough time to just get ready for a high, high profile fight, in my opinion. The visualisation in the head ramps up. Every time I'm doing something, it's it's more intense, it's more real. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm just getting ready for a fight mentally and physically. I'm, just, I'm in a fucking killer frame of mind nearly every day, you know what I mean? Everything is, is fight, everything is fight, you know what I mean, in this, in this life now. It's just for me, it's, everything I do is geared towards my next fight. You know what I mean? Everything. I could be fucking brushing my teeth in the morning and I'm just like, I'm ready to fight. You know what I mean? I'm moving my head. I'm just, it's, it's hard to explain. It's nearly impossible to explain, to be honest. But um, yeah, you nearly turn into a psychopath, to be honest. You know what I mean? A little bit. It turns you into a psychopath. You know what I mean? And maybe that's just me, I don't know. But that's, that's um, when you're this competitive and you're this fucking, you know what I mean? In love with this sport, you, you, if you're not a psychopath, you're not going to make it that far. You nearly have to be a psychopath, you know what I mean? So I've just kind of, I've accepted it. I'm a bit of a psychopath. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I love it, you know what I mean? I'm fucking driven. I'm actually so excited to fight again. And that's the thing that's, it's not hard for me to get to the gym every day. Even though I'm in bits every day and sometimes I don't want to train, sometimes I'm fucking bollocks. I still wake up and I'm, I'm, I'm itching to get to the gym. You know what I mean? I love being here. I love being tired. I love being sore. I love training. So it's pretty easy, you know what I mean? And then once you sign a contract, which I have done uh, yesterday, Actually, it's easy, you know what I mean? I'm, I know there's a man out there now trying to take my head off in a few weeks. He's training for me, so it makes it a little bit easier to get up out of bed in the morning and go get it, you know what I mean? So I'm, uh, I'm buzzing to get back in there, yeah? I'm fucking weak. Literally, since last week, I've had about six different opponents. And overall, since the fucking initial opponent, I've probably had about 10 different opponents. So it's, um, it's been a bit of a fucking joke, to be honest. But, you know, this is, this is the fight game. This is the fucking same thing since the start of my career. I've had chops and changes in opponent. This, this is why I don't train for anyone specifically, because this happens all the time. And it's happened fucking... I think every single fight I've ever had in my career, it's happened bar one, my professional debut. Every other fight, I've always had a contract, and then someone else jumps in, injuries, pull-outs, whatever fucking reason. But uh, I think overall about fucking 10 different names have been sent. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've torn, I have a grade one tear in my MCL right now. And I'm still training every day. I'm wrapping it up, I'm double wrapping it every day. I'm baby and I'm icing it, I'm doing physio three times a week. Ice baths, and it's everything you can do to speed up my recovery I'm doing. I'm resting it, I'm fucking taking painkiller stuff in. Anything I can do to just stay in the gym. Before I even sign the contract, they're putting up the post. You know what I mean? That's me and the new opponent. I don't even know what the fuck it is. <laughs> Maybe find me out. I got to the stage where my manager was fucking sending names every day and then I was like, 
I got fed up looking through names and I was like, you know what, I actually don't give up with now at this stage because every time I say yes, three days later it's someone new. So I just, I just said, look, get someone who's actually going to fucking show up and let's just go. Look, you know I mean? Two weeks out now. Two weeks out and I didn't have an opponent yesterday. And I have one today, it's mad. That's the fight game though, you have to be ready to fight, you know what I mean? So. Ready to rock. Four days ago, a king was born. My son, Kylo Crosby. Four days ago. Man, he was born on fight week. So he's born a champion. My girlfriend is sitting here, Kay, so she's a soldier. This fight is for me kids. Like anything, I don't really give a fuck to be honest. I don't care. He's in the red corner. He stands at five feet, 11 inches tall, and officially weighed in at 163.8 pounds with a professional record of six wins and one loss from North Inner City, Dublin, Ireland. Please welcome Keeper BDK Crosby. Um, an Irish fighter who came from the bottom and I've got to where I am today all through Dublin and all through Ireland and what happens is people get this notion in their head they get this idea oh I'm just gonna move to America that's and I'm gonna be very, it's, it, yeah, and don't get me wrong, there's, there's great gyms in America and there's, there is big opportunities and there is great facilities and of course, you know what I mean? And, but that's what we're conditioned to think, that there's better out there than there is here, you know what I mean? And that's one thing Connor always said, is like, you know, you think there's better out there when there's, you can you can do it all from here. I'm, I wanna do it all from here. I wanna get to the UFC, fight in the UFC, and represent Ireland from Ireland. Well, I'm proud of my Dublin roots and I believe that Irish fighters are amongst the best in the world. So I want to do it all from Dublin. I want to do it all from the gym I started at. What's the point in getting to the UFC and then you know, bouncing, you know what I mean? Bouncing to a different gym, no chance. Fuck that, you know what I mean? I'm, you know what I mean? I bleed green, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm Dublin to the fucking core, so. Oh, look at this fucking EG. <laughs> Okay, hell. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm doubling to the core, you know what I mean? So I just want to wanna do it all from here, to be honest. That's me. That's me goal. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's that's just the mentality I have, you know what I mean? I, I want to do it from Dublin. I want to march in there with the Irish flag wrapped around me, fighting out of Dublin, Ireland, for real, you know what I mean? Not fighting out of Dublin, Ireland, by way of fucking Florida, or by way of you know, New York or something stupid. No, fighting of Dublin, Ireland, from Dublin, Ireland, done it from Dublin, Ireland, from SBG, Ireland. Do you know what I'm saying? So that, that's my goal and, um, yeah, you know what I mean? That's the gym I started at and it's the gym I'll finish at, so. And don't get me wrong, I like to train in different gyms and stuff like that, but I never represent anywhere else, you know what I mean? That's that's just who I am. I'm, I'm the most loyal person you'd ever meet, so. That's it, uh, my loyalty is to Dublin, my loyalty is to SBG, and that's where I'm gonna stay, so. But yeah, well, it wouldn't mean a lot to me, yeah, getting to the UFC. It's like a lifelong goal, do you know what I mean? It was started off as a little dream when I was young, when I said I was 15, I used to watch the UFC, I always said, oh, I'll fight there someday. Now it's more so like it's an actual realistic goal that can be achieved if I just do all the right things, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, um, 
I'm not stupid, like I understand what it takes, but I mean, I've put the work in, I've put the fights in, I've built up my profile, I've done everything you can do. Just need to get a couple of wins, and that's it, you know what I mean? And then I, I, I reckon that uh, I'll have me shot then, so. Well, I just gotta enjoy the journey, you know what I mean? This fight coming up now is about just getting back to enjoying it, going in there and then uh, getting a nice highlight reel finish. That's what I really want. I wanna finish this lad and leave no questions asked and just, you know, get me hand raised once more and then move on. And then the future will just take care of itself then, you know what I mean? Winning solves everything. Winning solves everything. <laughs> Also weighing in at 80.4 kilos. Yeah. That will not be. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Too smart. Too smart. Too old. Yeah. Too old. Yeah. Too old. Yeah. Too old. Yeah. What I'm going to do to face you. What I'm going to do to face you. Yeah, I'm going to face you. 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 I'm Back down and enjoy them downloads, fat boy. Smash your head in. <laughs> Spots were flying during the way in between Keeper Crosby and Brian Lonzo. Keeper Crosby, the record of eight wins and three losses, two by submission, three by knockout, three by decision, fighting out of SBG Ireland. It's had a total of 23 fights, 11 amateur, 12 professional. Keeper looks really ready to fight. He looks like he came for a war. You know, it's like he has this aura that is almost intimidating. Oh my god, look at this, look at this. Brian and Crosby facing each other immediately, immediately. That's very separating them. This is intense. Yes, we get that ring girl out this of there because it's going to be a big fight. Oh my god, the front leg kicks but countered immediately by Kiefer. Pushed back mm. against the cage. Closing in the distance and trying mm. to take down successfully. Kiefer Cosby on top. Brian got him in love. From top, another elbow, elbows. elbow. Four elbows in a row. And he goes into full mount. Mm. Kiefer, Kiefer Cosby is in full mount right now. Mm. Brian Trying better, Brian better be careful. He's uh, lost quite a few fights by submission. Ooh, big no, elbows the from Crosby. The, the ref's Brian playing to defend to himself. Brian needs to show the referee that he is safe. <laughs> <laughs> a winner at 1 minute 28 seconds of the very first round. The winner via TKO, Kiefer Crosby! Finished the 6 a.m. session here at SVG. Um, I don't know me, get up at 6 o'clock. Know me, it's bleeding going to the airport, uh, going home. <laughs> Good bro, yeah, I was thinking, I'm in, for, I'm in Monday for surgery, yeah? Yeah, poxy man, poxy, yeah. A few weeks before the fight, maybe five weeks, I injured my knee and I wasn't sure what the injury was and it was very unstable, very sore. I was still trying through it, wrapped it up, got on with it. And then one week before the fight, I, I tore the whole thing completely. I went for a trip on the fence, it popped, um, and then I just I couldn't walk. And that was the Friday before the fight, so it was eight days before the fight. And from the Friday until the Monday, I literally couldn't walk, I was on the couch. Um, literally panicking, didn't know what I was going to do, I literally could not walk, I couldn't extend my leg, couldn't, I was limping around the gaff 
and uh, luckily enough I got an appointment to get a cortisone injection on the Monday, got a cortisone injection on Monday and then I was back walking and um, had the mobility back and uh, went training that night just to get the weight down and then yeah just fucking wrapped it up and got on with it and fought that Saturday one thankfully enough um, took the, I had to change things, I took the guy down mounted him and uh, elbowed the life out of him <laughs> as you're saying and then uh, but after that fight even during the warm up I threw a few kicks and it popped and I was like fuck it was, it was bad bad and uh, went home and got an MRI and I have a torn meniscus, a lot of cartilage damage and it's been in bits since so. It all does come down to discipline and hard work and just putting the hours in and eventually, you know, it'll pay off eventually. I will beat Terry. I just feel as well, do you know what I mean? It's a privilege as well, do you know what I mean? That I'm here and I'm doing what I'm doing as well. I mean, it's, it's the gratitude as well that gets me going, do you know what I mean? That hits me, especially when I have a fight coming up or when I'm backstage at a fight, you know what I mean? Or I'm about to walk into a cage, you know what I mean? My life could be so different than I was so different. You know what I mean? I've been through a lot of bad, bad times and um, I know for a fact that I'm not even supposed to be sitting here driving <laughs> me nice car that I bought, do you know what I mean? True fight, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be alive. I know that for a fact. I was always on the negative, you know what I mean, when I was younger. I made a lot of bad choices and I was in bad situations, but thankfully I fucking had something I could focus on. I had the gym, I had my teammates, I had, you know, work ethic. And I always felt better after training. Every time I did a training session, my mind would feel better. My life would just be in a better place, you know what I mean? I'd always feel like a, a new man after a hard training session. So, and I always encourage people to get to the gym. Do something, man. Do fucking something. Get to the gym. Do a hard workout. Do martial arts. Do something. Especially when you're hanging around with fucking, fucking idiots, or you're just in a bad place, or you're even living in a bad area. So don't blame the area and don't blame the people. It's you that's making the choices. You know what I mean? Get up and have a plan and go for it. You know what I mean? And fuck what anyone thinks. If they're gonna put you down anyway, they're gonna say shit anyway. So let them say shit. Let them say shit while you're fucking cruising while you're doing good for yourself so that's the buzz I'm on all the time you know what I mean I'm just positive I'm just I just love working hard and I love just writing down goals and going for them and fuck it if you fail fuck it you're still doing better than a lot of people you know what I mean and you'd be a lot closer to the success than, than not so that's what really motivates me as well is the, the comparison of where I was versus where I am do you know what I mean I'm doing a hell of a lot better than I was growing up you know what I mean? And I could have been, I could be in a far worse situation too, so thank God I'm not now making documentaries and shit. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Cruising around America and all. Who does he think he is? Gosh. <laughs>